So, velocity, acceleration, and displacement. You do this in science 10, you flog this to death in physics 11, we're going to do it in one day in physics 12. Uh, we start with actually acceleration because it's defined. Acceleration is defined as a change in velocity over a time interval. Or in math notation, what's the symbol for change in? A little delta, a triangle. And how about I put an A equals? I can write that better and clearer so that Brie in the back can see. A equals delta V over delta T. Okay. And change in anything, delta anything, is always final minus initial. So we can write it as this. A equals V final minus V initial, that's change in velocity. And for time, we get sloppy because time is always a change in. You may have noticed last year, we stopped putting a triangle in front of it. We just said clue in to measure time. You have to start and stop a stopwatch. It's by definition a final minus <coughs> initial. For Pete's sakes, let's just go with that. And last year, we rewrote this. We got the VF by itself. How? Well, since the t is on the bottom, we would have timesed by t. Then we would have plussed the vi over, because this is the easiest equation to rewrite in your head. We would have said vf vector equals vi vector plus a vector t scalar. vf equals vi plus at. Remember that from last year, Jordan? We flogged it to death. Um, there's, there is an assumption here. This assumes an unchanging, fancy word, uniform acceleration. If you have a changing acceleration, it can be done. You really need calculus to do it. Where would you have a changing acceleration, Mr. Dick? Rockets. As the space shuttle or as rockets leave the Earth, the engine force is constant, but as they burn fuel, what happens to their overall mass? decreases. So if your force is the same, but your mass is getting smaller, what has to get bigger so that F equals MA still works? Yeah, someone whispered the acceleration. There's a great example of a changing acceleration. The further, the longer the rocket is firing, the faster, the higher its acceleration because it's losing mass. It's why the most economical way to get to the moon was a three-stage rocket. You don't want to have to carry the fuel to get back to get from the Earth and carry the engine to get from the Earth all the way to the moon. That's a waste of potential energy. We can do better than that. Um, if we have uniform acceleration, we can find average speed written as either V average or those that did foundations of Math 11 last year learned that a horizontal bar is an average. I like that because it's less writing, but it freaks kids out, so I've learned I have to just put a little average down there. What's the average of anything? Callum, if you have 10 bucks, and if Jordan has 20 bucks, between the two of you, what do you average? If we got a $10 bill and a $20 bill, between the two of them, what are the average? How can you get a 15 with those two numbers? Riley. So average velocity is final plus initial divided by 2. Full honesty, Cole, I almost never use that. In fact, in my 10 years of teaching physics 12, only once on a provincial did I have to pull that one out. However, I need that one to derive the next one, which is the one that we use all the time. That's why this one is on your formula sheet. It's because we need it to get the next one. You see, we have defined distance as average speed times time, the average times time, which means that since it's average speed times time, I can put that VF plus VI over 2 times T. Oh, and VF is VI plus AT. What does that mean? I can rewrite this like this. K 
Can you see I just replaced the VF with the, the VI plus AT? Uh, by the way, I'm going to show you how to derive this equation because I am a nerd. You don't have to memorize the derivation, but you should challenge yourself to see if you follow every one of these steps. This is good logic, good thinking. Sebastian, can you read to me what's inside the brackets on the top? Just, you, you just don't fill in the words. Read it to me literally as simple. So VI... Okay, so scene one, act one, take two. Read to me what's in the brackets. VI plus AT plus... Did you say VI twice? Why, that sounds like like terms that we can gather. That was my whole point of that. I think I can rewrite this as, in brackets, two VIs and AT over two times T. In fact, I think I can go like this, chunk, chunk. The fancy word for that is expanding brackets or distributing, depending on who your math nine or math 10 teacher. Some of you may think front door bomber. I've never quite understood that, but God bless Mr. Rocca because the kids know how it works. Uh, anyways, I can multiply Claire, she's smiling. I can multiply that T into everything. When I do that, I get this, D equals two V I T plus a t squared all over 2. And hopefully right around now, some of you are starting to see where we're going because hopefully you're starting to see parts of a very familiar equation. I can do one more thing. Dividing that whole fraction by 2, that's the same as dividing the front part by 2 and dividing the back part by 2. This can be written as 2 v i t over 2 plus a t squared over 2. Right? And in that first fraction, Jordan, do you see a 2 on the top? Say yes. Do you see a 2 on the denominator? Say yes. Can I cancel them? I can. Some of you are whispering because you see the punchline. It turns out I can simplify this to VIT plus, now I could write AT squared over 2, but how have you seen it written in your formula sheet all the time? A half AT squared. That's where this equation comes from, and we can put that in box number 3. D equals VIT plus a half a t squared, where d is a vector, vi is a vector, a is a vector, and time is a scalar. Ta you awake now, Hakeem? I'm amazed I got you, because you were pretty good last year. You were a rock. <sighs> Again, Kieran, do you have to know where it comes from? Do you have to be able to do that derivation? No, but I like to, whenever possible, unless it's a very complicated derivation, I will try and show kids, hey, I'm not making this up. We can derive this. This is the laws of the universe. The fourth equation, the only other equation on your formula sheet for this unit one on kinematics, I'm not going to derive right now. It shows up very easily when we get to energies, so I'm just going to tell it to you. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2Ad. Mr. Duick? Yes, Nathan. Why didn't you bother to add the... To add the what? What didn't I put in this equation that I put in the other ones? Do you see it? Time doesn't belong. I heard somebody else. I think they might have been right. Vector. 
the vectors. This equation is a bit of a, in fact, there are some physics teachers that won't ever show this equation, and the, they won't teach the kids it, and the reason is technically you don't need it. It's a shortcut equation. You can always go back to Vf equals Vi plus At, find something, and then go to D equals Vi plus a half, T plus a half AT squared. They don't like this one because, Jacob, it technically gives you a scalar answer, and you'll have to think about the answer and decide whether your answer should be negative going up or going down or positive going up. This will never give you an actual negative result. Okay, just lost my screen here. Hang on. Ah, just kind of went wonky. <coughs> problem is when it does that, my screencast recorder, I think, loses the image. I'm going to keep this one going, but I have a feeling all I'm going to get for the rest of this lesson is a black screen. We'll see. Don't worry, I can use mine from last year, but still. This one was going pretty good. I had Hakeem scared. I could humiliate him online. He's got an unusual enough name that as soon as I said it, anyone watching would know who it was. So we'll see. I'm still going to try and get this one online, but we'll find out. I wrote down here, let's do some examples. To solve a problem, um, I give my kids in Physics 11 a couple of acronyms, and the first one is DFIC, which stands for Data Formula Insert Calculate. If I come to a question and Ryan, I'm not sure what to do, my first thing is I defic. I list my data. And this is why, and I'm sure Mr. Camozzi did this last year too, but if you had me, I said, it's really worth memorizing what units go with what, because half the time you can just glance at the units and you know right away, oh, that's a time, that's a force, that's energy or work, because you've memorized what units go with what quantities. And that's also going to be my advice this year too. Example one. This is reasonably accurate according to the internet results. Now, how accurate is the internet? I don't know, but this is what it, I found online. A dragster has an acceleration of 18 meters per second squared. Begins from rest. How fast will the dragster be going after 2.1 seconds? So in our notes here, we're going to defic and be careful and list everything. If in your homework you are comfortable enough with the kinematics that you can go straight to an equation and straight to the answer, and great. Honestly, that's what I do. I could prob I'm fairly sure I could do this, I could solve this, showing no work. But in my notes, when I'm studying, I want to know what we did. So, I always start out by asking Jordan, what are they asking me to find? Uh, final velocity. I write down V final equals question mark. And then I start on the question, I walk back through looking for every number or physics word and seeing what that is. What's that 18? Acceleration. How do you know? Yep. Even if it hadn't, the meters per second squared is what I'm hunting for. You can write the units in your list of data too. I tend not to because it just gets, my writing is messy and ugly, but you can. Ooh. I would probably have underlined that word, that phrase, as soon as I saw it because that's a very important physics phrase. I saw Brianna nodding. Bri, what does that tell me from rest? What's that mean? What's zero? Time? Uh, did you say the VI? Did you then say, yeah, after I said, did you say the VI? So if you keep going at that volume, we're going to have this conversation every time because I'm hearing this. Did you say VI? Okay, there we go. Thank you. Thanks, Bree. You know what? It's not your fault. My class is too full. People don't normally sit that far back. What else do I know? T equals 2.1. I would now say to myself, self, I'm looking for an equation that has VF, VI, A, and T and does not have D in it. Which one? VF equals VI minus AD. Minus? Oh, oh times AD. Times? What did I write? Plus AD. Sorry. Thank God that's on your formula sheet.
Have they given me directions in this question? That I'm not going to be freaky fussy about vector notation. The VF is already by itself. Zero plus 18 times 2.1. If I do this in my head, 18 times 2 is 36. 18 times 0.1 is 1.8. Uh, 37.8, double check me. Yes? And I said last day we're going to go to two or three sig figs from now on for the rest of this year just for convenience. And 37.8 is to three sig figs. So I'm good with that. Jordan, you started us off. Units. Uh, second. Yep. I will be fussy about units. That is the one thing I am a stickler on. You forget units on a test, half mark off every time you do it. <coughs> so what would be smart before you hand in any test? What would be a smart procedure to do? Yeah, go through your written work, check for units, and check for two or three sig figs in your final answer, because I'll get grumpy about that, too. Not Jordan, but Jordan. What are they asking me to find in B? Um, how far were we traveled after 2.1 seconds? Is it the same time as in A? Yes. Then I'm not going to relist all of my data, since I have it conveniently right above in the previous question. You can, if you really want to be organized. I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to say uh, D equals question mark. So Jordan, not Jordan, I'm looking for an uh, equation that has a D in it, and then has some of the other stuff. Although I would prefer to avoid using an equation that has V final in it. I could. But since I calculated V final, and Jacob, I'm a little worried I might have got it wrong, I'll use it if I have to, but I'm a good test writer. I'll try and avoid using the V final. Jordan, not Jordan, is there an equation that has acceleration, V initial, and time in it? D equals uh, V initial or times time. Uh, How about we just say D equals VIT plus a half AT squared, and let's pretend all of us know what the abbreviations stand for. In this class, we will tend to abbreviate. No? Okay, tough audience. I abbreviated the word. Re okay, someone got it. And Jordan noticed that the D was by itself. Jordan had me last year. Otherwise, he would have, in his head, just rewritten the equation to get whatever is by itself. Sure. Jordan, not Jordan, why can I do this? Uh, VI is zero. Great. Convenient. So this is going to be 0.5 or a half. I usually, when I go to my calculator, write 0.5 because that's less intimidating for most of you, although some of you do have fancy schmancy fraction buttons. It's also less typing. To type 1 half, I have to go 1 divided by 2, which is 3 keystrokes. To type 0.5, it's 0.5, 2 keystrokes. And yes, I've thought these things through and am that lazy. Acceleration is 18. Time is 2.1. Uh, I think you're going to get, I'm going to say it's going to be half of 37.8, as a matter of fact, which is going to be 18.5, uh, 18.9. Oh, how about squaring time? Oh, I can't believe I did that, because that's the classic mistake that people make during the year. And on tests, I always write a huge squared exclamation mark, and I just did it myself. So that's going to be a little tougher, Mr. Duke. It's going to be 9 times 2.1 squared. 2.1 squared is going to be 4. Ah, uh, this one I'm going to need a calculator for. Shouldn't, but I will. 39.7? Is that right? 39.7 what? Meters. Who's calling me? Someone ask a question? No? OK. Turn the page. Because I've turned the page, I will probably now re-defic, re-list my data, probably. But uh, the ch question has changed, so I'm also going to copy it from the previous page. I'm going to reread this question. What are they asking me to find here? Josh. Ah. <coughs> what else have they told me in this question? V final is 126. I'm going to need some stuff from the previous original data. I think the acceleration we're going to assume is still 18. Um, oh, 
Bree, what did you tell me V initial was? What? So I'm looking for an equation that has T, V, F, V, I, and A in it. Oh, and when you read it to me, could you please rewrite it in your head and just get the T by itself using magical formula manipulation? Help me out, Callum. What do we got? I want you to rewrite it and get the T by itself in your head. So read it to me as T equals, my friend. You could last year. I agree. You can memorize that equation if you're nuts. I would just learn to rewrite the <coughs> formulas. It's way easier. Where V final is 126, V initial is 0, all over 18. Uh, this might work out nice. Uh, 126 divided by 18, that's the same as uh, 63 divided by uh, is it 7.0 even? Yep. Yeah. Why would this be wrong? That's one, well, I never said decimal places. I got to be fussy. Sig figs. That's one sig fig. So you know what? Here, I'd probably go to two sig figs. You could go 7.00, that's fine too, but I think it's fairly obvious. And by the way, technically, that's three sig figs, although the 18 on the previous page was two sig figs. If you use your physics 11 rules, we should go to two sig figs for this question, but <laughs> D. How far will the dragster have traveled once it hits 153 meters per second? Hmm. Mickey, what's it asking me to find? what you're saying, but if you talk louder, there might be a chance that I can understand you. D. Hey, there you go. Did you say D? No. Yeah, I could tell now. Uh, it looks like they've given me some new data. What's that 153? Make yeah. VF, good. And Mickey, I think VI is still zero, yes? I think the acceleration is still 18. Can you find for me, Mickey, an equation that has a VF, a VI, an A, a D, and does not have time in it? Either on your formula sheet or on today's lesson. Yes, now, in your head, can you get the D by itself and read it to me that way? I'll give you a hint. D equals? Can you do it? Okay, Curtis, you want to try it? Can you rewrite the VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD equation but get the D by itself in your head? Make me proud. Yeah, you got that. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Did you say VF squared? You said VF squared, yes? Of course you did. Yeah? Yes. Keep going. Yep. Yep. Now, that's not crucial, Mickey. It's nice, though. By the way, remember I said a lot of teachers don't actually teach this equation? You see, you could have used VF, VI, A, to find time from VF equals VI plus AT, and then once you had T, you could go D equals VI, T plus a half AT squared. It would have taken you two steps. This is a shortcut equation. And we've actually had discussions online. I know there are some teachers that I respect across the Lower Mainland who adamantly think giving you that equation is bad teaching, and they may be right. I disagree, but I'm willing to concede that they may be right. Mickey, what was V final? Squared? Yes, Mark, thank you. Minus? Zero. Squared? Yes, Mark, thank you. 
Most common mistake, by the way, kids for some reason forget the squareds in this equation too, which really gives you a completely different answer. Divided by 2 times 18. Divided by 2 times 18. Manisha, is there more than one number in the denominator? Is there more than one number in the denominator? No. Yes. A 2 and an 18, yes? Yeah. Is there more than one number in the numerator in the top? <coughs> better put the top in brackets, better put the bottom in brackets. Right? The other classic mistake with this equation in particular is I see kids do this. They're like, okay, uh, bracket 153 squared minus 0 squared. And they can do that and then they go divided by 2 times 18. What's wrong with that? Why is that incorrect? Jacob, huh? Your calculator doesn't know that that 18 is supposed to be on the bottom. In fact, if you put a times in front of it, unless you tell it different, it assumes that 18 is supposed to be on the top. So you have to, you have to, you must, Manisha, put it in brackets. Is that okay? Good. What'd you get? By the way, I have a bit of a preference. If you didn't get 99% in Physics 11, you should be trying on your calculator as we go along because you get to get your calculator mistakes out of your system before the homework and before the test. One of, the, my big, one of my few things that will make, make me grumpy is when I see kids that have all the right work shown on the test and the wrong answer. It tells me, you know what, when we were going over these, when I paused and allowed you to do this on your calculator, when I delayed and allowed you to figure this out, you were too lazy to pick your calculator up. Well, then you deserve to lose some marks. Uh, I'm getting 650.25? So I guess 650? Example E, when the dragster hits a top speed of 162 meters per second, that's pretty fast. That's approaching 300 miles an hour. I think the top dragsters start flirting with around two way. You know what? They may be cracking 300 now. The chute is deployed. If it takes 12 seconds for the dragster to come to a stop, What's its average acceleration? I wrote average acceleration because I've been on the other end of a parachute. I jumped out of an airplane. Your initial deceleration is much greater, and your later deceleration is much smaller. But a changing acceleration, you really need calculus to deal with. So I'm being fussy and correct and careful here, Jordan. And I'm saying, OK, it's technically an average acceleration. It wouldn't be that the whole way through. But can we pretend it is? Did I say already on the first day most of what I teach you is wrong? This is one of those things. Okay. Isaac, what are they asking me to find here? There's two parts. So in, let's, you know what? Since there's two questions, an if and then a how long, let's do a part A and a part B. So in part A, in the if question, what are they asking me to find, kiddo? Uh, so for part A, they're asking me to find A. Hey, that's convenient. <laughs> All right, let's walk through the question. What have they told me, Isaac, my friend? I see 162. What's that? I got to disagree. It's a V. What's V final? Read the question very, very carefully. Can you tell me what your final velocity is in this question? Uh, ah, just because it's bigger doesn't mean it's final, right? So we're going to take that physics 11 habit, throw that physics 11 habit away. We're going to say from now on, I want to think things through. So I think V final is zero. So what's that 162, my friend? Thank you, and thank you for making that common mistake. I was hoping you somebody would because I wanted to talk about it. Thank you for taking one for the team. Uh, what else have they told me? I see a 12. Right? I mean, I'm really just looking for numbers. I see a 12. What's a 12? How do you know? You're right. Yeah. Don't overcomplicate it, kiddo. 
So Isaac, if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, I need an equation that has an A, a V final, a V initial, and a T in it. Is there an equation that has an A, a V final, a V initial, and a T in it? There is? Excellent. Can someone read it to me? But can you get the A by itself in your head as you do so? Sasha, my friend, you want to take a stab at it? What does A equal? So not with numbers yet, just give me the new formula if I rewrite. Are we looking at the VF equals VI plus AT equation? Yeah? Can you rewrite that getting the A by itself? Let's see, let's see. See the A? See it there? There's a T next to it. Eventually we're going to divide by a T, but not yet. What else is on the same side as the A? You got your formula sheet? Yes. Under kinematics? Other side. Right side up. Under kinematics, do you see the VF equals VI plus AT? By the way, on your formula sheet, it doesn't use VF and VI. What does it use? V and, you know what? It's actually, if you're British, V and V naught. They don't say zero, they say naught. Which, of course, leads us to this wonderful little paradox. Oh, I don't have it here, hang on. Can you get the V by itself? So get the A by itself? I think you said A is equal to VF minus VI divided by T, duh. Is that what you said? Yes, and I like the duh, nice touch. We, we want to reach that point. This is tough, but you want to discipline yourself to get, if you, if you last year did not bother learning how to rewrite formulas, I'm telling you, I'm doing you the biggest favor this year if you push yourself and learn how to do it in your head. Uh, Sasha, keep going. What is V final? Yeah. Nice. V initial? Time? I'm looking at this. I'm going to get a negative answer. You know what? I should because we're slowing down. We're decelerating. That should be negative. Yes? Uh, 162 divided by 12. That's going to be the same as... 50 and 30 and 81 divided by 6 is going to be the same as 27 divided by 3. Uh, no, I'm wrong. What, what do you get? Negative 13.5? Units? It's acceleration. So this is one time when I'm expecting a negative, and when I get it, I get a little smile on my face. It confirms I probably did this right. And Isaac, do you remember when you suggested that, uh, that 162 was V final? Hopefully, you might have noticed, hey, I got a positive acceleration, but I'm slowing down. Something's wonky. And if you wouldn't have, in a few weeks, you will have. We'll, we'll be there. Part B. Part B is a bit tricky because when you see the phrase how long, usually that means time. But read this one carefully. Is this asking me to find time? No. What's it asking me to find? Distance. How long, unfortunately, is an ambiguous phrase in English. It can mean a distance. How long did you run? It can mean a time. How long did you run for? It's ambiguous. So I try and avoid it, but it's going to show up in your questions sometimes because it's one of the most common phrases. So we want to find. I'm not going to relist my data. Ashley, I'm pretty sure that it's all the same. Ashley, I'm looking for a D. Can you give me an equation that has a D in it and then has some of all this stuff in it? That's the one that I would use because the other equation that has a D in it is the VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. I'm going to have to use acceleration there. And is there an, do you have one more equation on yours or not? No, you don't have the, the one that we occasionally used last year, the bracket plus 2 thingy? That's not on here, is it? Nope. No. So you know what, Ashley? In grade 12, I'm going to say, in physics 11, I kind of tried to avoid using data that I just calculated to calculate new data. In physics 12, I'm going to say, I'm confident that I'll get the first question right, and I'll use it to find the second question, because it's shorter. So you said D equals VIT, I agree, plus a half A 
t squared, where, Ashley, what was vi? Careful. Careful. Yes. Beat that physics 11 habit. Not always going to be zero this year. Stuff's going to move backwards this year, or slow down, or fall. Uh, what was t? Yep. Plus 0.5. What was a? Nice. And t was 12. Don't forget the squared. What do you get? Go to your calculator. Please try typing this in. You should be able to type all that in in one fell swoop on one line. Uh, by the way, it's distance. Are you traveling forwards or backwards as you're slowing down? Forwards. Am I expecting a positive answer or a negative answer? Better be positive. I think if I rec oh. If you square the time, but you're not squaring the negative 13.5, Chief. Oh, okay, so that's got to keep a negative on it, right? I think, do you get 2,081.25? Hang on, am I wrong, Mr. Duick? 162 times 12 plus a half times, oh, you know what? I hit a plus sign. See it? This is why. Did I go on a rant about calculators and two-line displays and being able to spot errors? That's why. Uh, do you get, yeah, I, I knew the answer was just shy of a kilometer. 972 meters. <clears throat> By the way, all of those numbers, according to the internet, are reasonably accurate. I will usually try and use numbers that roughly make sense. Um, I'm going to a, a, a physics textbook seminar a week from yesterday, and they have these online physics lessons, and I already went crazy and ballistic on one of them because the question was, uh, find the coefficient of friction on a bike tire on pavement, and the numbers that they gave you, those that had your physics 11 last year, you got a mu of 0.1, which is ice. And I, I went ballistic. I said, you're telling me that this bike tire on pavement is slipperier than I, I teach my kids to look at their answers and ask, does this make sense? This answer makes no sense. They haven't changed it yet, but I'm going to the seminar just so I can speak up and say, you got to change this or I won't use your book. Fight the power. Okay. Nerd power. Turn the page. A couple more and we're done. On your tests, there'll be one test per unit. On your tests, I kid you not, on the written section, I kid you not, there will be essay questions. <gasps> well, okay, not essay like write a paragraph. There will be some type of a proof question. And in fact, the magic phrase they're going to use is using principles of physics. And you can see the magic phrase right here. They'll say, explain your answer using principles of physics. I will give you lots of them to practice in your homework. There will always be several of them in your great big unit review package. And I will teach you how to answer them. And they will start out at an easier level and we will progress in difficulty. But one of the things I want to teach you is how to make an argument and convince me that you're right. And I will teach you always two ways to do them. You can make up reasonable numbers and just crunch the numbers but my little math nerd heart will also how to show you how to do these algebraically. Here's your first one. It says this. An object starts at rest. What's that you say? Underline the word at rest, the phrase at rest. I agree. And accelerates east at a constant rate. When it has traveled 10 meters, it is moving at speed v. How fast will it be moving when it has traveled 20 meters? Select the best answer. A. V, B, more than V, C, 2V, or D, less than 2V but more than V. Here's how we're going to work this. You are going to vote as to what you think is the correct answer. Now, here's how the votes work. How high you hold your hand up is how sure you are that you're right. 
I'm sure. Pretty sure. Kind of guessing, but gut instinct. Only voting, because if I don't vote and Mr. Duick notices I was too lazy to put my hand up, he's going to damage my self-esteem and make fun of me. If you feel you have a proof, feel free to stand on your chair or desk and raise your hand, because that's the ultimate. You're saying, I know I'm right, and I think I can prove this. So take a look at this again. Think about this. We start at rest, traveling east. When it has traveled 10 meters, it's moving at speed V. How fast will it be moving when it has traveled 20 meters? A, V, B, more than 2V, C, 2V, D, less than 2V, but more than V. I guess we're saying it's definitely not slowing down. Okay, you ready? We'll pause the video for the voting. So Alex, it does say from rest. So if I was making up reasonable numbers, I would definitely say this, yes? Okay. Oh, and I know that distance one is 10 meters, yes? It says it's moving at speed V. Make up a nice V that it could be moving at, a nice number to do some math with. Five would be good, 20 would be good. I wouldn't use 10 again because I might get the other 10 mixed up with that 10 and I don't want to confuse my brain. So if V final was five, could we calculate for our made up example what the acceleration has to be? Is there an equation that has V initial, D, V final, and A in it? Yeah? Which one, Michael? Sorry, which one I put A? Well, I just want to know, first of all, is there an equation that has those four things in it? Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Okay, which one? Uh, Vera squared. Okay, get the A by itself for me now, kiddo. Vf squared. Get the A by itself. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, Vf squared minus Vf squared. So for the numbers that Alex is making up, what would the acceleration be? It looks like it would be 5 minus 0 all over 20. See, I can do this in my head. It's 5 divided by 20, which I think is 1 quarter, which as a decimal is 0.25. Oh, isn't it squared, Mr. Duick? Oh, I did it again. Good gosh, Mr. Duick. Who said, isn't it squared? I heard, who was that? I heard it was over there. Is it you? Seriously, no, because you get a candy. Is it you? Okay, and, and I got to get, uh, give me a second here. Come on. Too many things going on at once here. Now, I can already hear people starting to change their answers because they started to race ahead and do some calculations in their head. Now that we know the acceleration based on Alex's example, let's go to situation two where distance two is 20, right? VI is still zero, right? A in our specific example is 1.25 and they want us to find V final. Well, I think I can use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD, where VI is conveniently 0. I think I can say VF squared equals 2 times 1.25 times, what was D, 20? That gives me VF squared. How to get rid of a squared? What do you get when you go 2 times 1.25 times 20? 2 times 1.25 is 2.5 times 20 is 50. You get the square root of 50. Do you get 5? What do you get? 7. 7 point, 7 point, sorry? 7.1? So apparently after 20 meters, it's going 7.1 if we use Alex's example, meters per second. So what's the correct answer? Hmm? It looks like, because twice as fast, if C was correct, we would have got an answer of exactly 10.
which is why I say make up nice numbers so you can recognize the conditions. Yes? And we got an answer less than 10. Turns out D. Now it says explain your answer using principles of physics. We just did. That's a perfectly valid. Oh, you know what? We should do uh, what do three dots mean? Therefore, D. There is a way, there is a way, Sasha, to do that with no numbers, completely looking at the equations and substituting it. And, and you can do it purely algebraically, and it's nerdy, and it's cool, and that's fine. But I'm going to say to start out, when in doubt, make up reasonable numbers, nice numbers, avoiding ones and zeros, because stuff might cancel when it wasn't supposed to. Okay. <coughs> I've gone a long time. Going to nuke example four. It's only a few minutes left in class, but you're not going to get too much homework. And next class, ideally, we're doing a rocket launch, so ideally, you'll have no homework. So if you want to do this homework on the weekend, you can, or you can put this off till next week, Monday night or Tuesday night. It's totally up to you. Here is what your homework is. I think you can do, before I take your question mark, I think you can do number one, two, Three is good. Four is good. Five is good. Why don't you just say one through five? Shut up. Uh, six is good. Seven we did in our homework. Do I want to do the slide question? The slide question is always a little bit tricky. You know what? I'm going to pause on that. So one, zero, zero, five, six. You can do them either right on, uh, uh, do you have a blank? Is, is the back of this sheet blank? Yeah. If you want to do them on the back and say paper, you can. You can do them on a piece of paper. I don't care. So one to six. Right now, it looks like it's one to six. Okay.